All right, I want to introduce Dan Heinel from Westfield, Indiana. Uh, Dan is the president of the local uh, NMRE division, and uh, he's got a great layout. So let me unmute him. Take it away, Dan. Hello, everyone. I want to thank Eric uh, for providing this opportunity to show my layout. And everyone in the OPSIG uh, out there who's going to take time to share it with me. And also, uh, I see several familiar faces out there, and I'd like to say hi to all those and uh, hope to have you back here real soon. So with that said, we'll get started here. I need my screen sharing on. Go ahead. All right. Okay, my name on my railroad is uh, Rail Express Railroad, RXRR. It's an operated oriented layout. Um, it's a freelance fictitious railroad around a major city, which we call Gotham. You can see an aerial map here. And on the map, you'll see the various towns and interchanges and stuff. Obviously, the main town is Gotham. Um, over to the right, there is a lake and then a river coming through. Uh, for those people familiar enough, this is actually a picture of Toledo, which is another um, prototype railroad that actually had a Beltline railroad in complete loop around their city. Looking at it schematically, the railroad is basically a circle folded into a figure eight and folded onto itself like you would like a rubber band. And then we have the, the high line group here. Uh, uh, East Logan, and it runs all the way over down to uh, Gotham Yard. Again, then goes over here to Gotham Yard, goes through a, a section yard, and back to West Logan. So that, and you can see where the major yards are in yellow, interchanges are in red, um, industrial areas are in blue, and approximate mile markers are <clears throat> fictitiously looking at a 60 mile loop for those interested in it. The overview, the, it's a railroad is a CTC controlled double track uh, Beltline Railroad built for operations. As of today's date, I've had approximately 250 op sessions on this railroad from the time I started building it back in 1995. It utilizes the CMRI uh, train detection and signaling modern graphic TC display using uh, Microsoft Visual Basic. Let me get rid of this here. Uh, program which I wrote. Um, car forwarding system is called car orders. It's a specific type of uh, uh, car forwarding system that I co-developed with a good friend of mine, Hank Tenwald, uh, back when I lived in Grand Rapids, oh, around 2005. The main aspect of this is that each industrial spot is assigned a specific car type. Currently, there's close to over 600 car spots on the railroad. I use NCE wireless. Um, I use an intercom phone system for communication between the road crews and dispatcher. And the trains are run in a sequence. So when one gets done, you go to the next train, whatever comes up. We'll show, we'll look at the train log on that. A typical crew will be the dispatcher, Gotham Yard Master, Sex and Havana Yard Master, and eight single or two person crews. Um, this gives us 11 people working on the railroad as, have had as high as close to 20 people operating on the railroad with two person crews when we've had syrups and other special op sessions. Uh, the reason why they keep it at 11, everybody kind of knows what they're doing, then I get to operate also, which makes it kind of nice. Well, I got my crew together, and here they are. Uh, these guys all got together for Christmas. They all showed up, had a great time. Uh, obviously, uh, they look kind of shady to me, but uh, they're always good to have a bunch of friends here to operate on the railroad. The layout itself is a 2,700-square-foot room. Double track main line, which is approximately 830 feet, 
with another 75 feet branch line. Uh, according to third planet, I have a total track length of 37 and five actual feet. I have 325 turnouts. Uh, the layout is uh, two levels, but one deck. And there's a six inch difference and you'll see that. I designed it for operations is that when you're on one level of switching, the other level is just a run through. So it avoids any um, congestion problems that you might have. It's fully detected. There's 168 blocks. It's fully signaled. There's over 200 signal heads on it or 540 LEDs. And there's 30 control points. This is the layout. Again, down here at the bottom is Logan, which is our main interchange yard with the class one railroads. Again, this railroad was, was built as a consortium with other class one railroads to service the uh, town of Gotham. You can go east or this is west going this way. You'll go down, here's it being a figure eight, here's where it crosses itself. And you're gonna go to go down incline and around, all the way around, you're on the bottom level, back around. Then you get, you're still staying in the red level and your first time you come to a sextant. You do, there's various interchanges you'll stop off at. Uh, Sexton is a minor yard that you'll do some setoffs and pickups. And then you'll continue on. All, all around. So now you've, you've gone through halfway. Now you're going to go up. Incline. And you go, go around to the town of Gotham. To do that train link, doing a yard transfer, because that's what we have. Um, out of the yard, it takes you about an hour. Also on the railroad, you'll notice <coughs> that there's 20 switching districts associated with it. So that's uh, 20 different individual um, local freights. Some of them come out of Gotham. Some of them come out of Sexton. So some of them will come out of Havana. Of these switching districts, there's several of them that are completely off the main line. Here's one off of Gotham Industrial, North Gotham Industrial, RX Facilities, Hudson, Rowan, Yard, and then Rowan, Erie, and Randall are all completely switching districts that are off the main line. So once the local crews go out that way, uh, they're no bother to the dispatcher at all. And down at the bottom, some other statistics about the railroads. This is my modern graphics uh, CTC panel. Again, it's written in Visual Basic using Bruce Chubb's CMRI uh, train detection system. And you can see up at the very top left is Logan going eastbound to the right. You, you'll see uh, the various towns. Blue lines are um, actual industrial switching districts. White lines are unassigned trackage. There's a Red line sitting here in, in Logan. Those are where trains are being occupied. Yellow lines are kind of hard to see is um, the yard in Havana. And you can see the various different places that you have to switch off or drop off to various interchanges. Again, it goes all the way down to the bottom and you're back in again to Logan. So it's a complete circle. Dispatcher has got himself a phone over here that you can hardly see and some of his paperwork. This is a more of a close-up shot of the panel. Uh, forgive me, the uh, phone that I was using kind of washes out the color. But again, there's, this is a red line here and a red line here. That means the tracks are being occupied. Again, every car in the, of the 600 cars on the railroad have uh, uh, resistor wheel sets on them. So that's aids in the track detection. And again, that uh, gives you some idea. Here, <clears throat> train 201 is ready to depart. Dispatcher clicks on this uh, symbol here, the signal head, and he can set the direction of traffic going this way. That would be the green line. That train's got authority. If you go back to this point, uh, 
the dispatcher controls these 30, 30 uh, control points. He can route the trains going which way back and forth. There's also provision for where the train crew can take local control of the train after uh, they get permission from dispatch. Over here on this slide, you see a train SO3, which is a train working here uh, out of Lynchburg. And you can see that the software and the computer RSO will assign 15 minutes of tracking time for that train crew to work. Dispatcher has the capability of adding or subtracting to that time. And that gives the train authority to work in those areas. Um, so here we've got our train ready to go. Another feature of the software of the program is the train ID. The train is left here. You can see that this ID mark of 201 will follow that train as it goes across the railroad. Again, will help out uh, the dispatcher knowing we got eight or 10 trains running on the railroad at one time. Makes it very uh, convenient for them to work on. And here, he, he's, from here he's, to, to this point, he's we're probably clearing them around get around this train here. So he's cleared them all the way up to Liberty. He's now provided Liberty with uh, clearance to go to the next block. And here's the signal head. All right, Rail Express uses four different types of train, the yard transfers, local turns, unit trains, and passenger trains. Yard trains, or yard transfer trains, they start out of Logan uh, with 10 cars. That's because of the size of the, the trackage there. But when they get to Gotham, they will probably have stopped off at least one minor yard and at least three interchanges, building the size of their train from 10 to 22 cars. The local turns we will pick up and set out at the 900, uh, 596 car spots serving 138 industries. Again, there's 22 switching districts and the average of eight cars per train. I also have four types of unit trains, which basically run the entire railroad from where they start to where they get done. That type of train would probably last hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, depending on traffic and everything else. But we have some coal, aggregate, petroleum products, chemicals and grain. These are great trains for people who don't want to do a lot of switching. And for that one person who would like to run a doodle bug, I have one of those, which will make various passenger stops. This is a dispatcher train log sheet. There's two sheets like this. <clears throat> Again, up to the left hand is the train number, name of the train, or in, uh, where it's going to depart from the direction, where it's gonna come back to, and then the crew and the time. So all the ones with the numbering sequence, anything with a G or an S or an H, those are locals out of those yards that are go out and do turns and then come back. The 103 is our 100 trains, our trains leaving Gotham, either east or westbound. And here's the various stops, like in this case, Gotham, the stop of Dundee Interchange, Sexton and Logan, uh, 201 trains are trains that are going to leave Logan and proceed to Gotham. And again, and here you'll see what track to get on to, track three, 103 gets on track three, 201 starts from uh, track one. I did that in order to make it a little bit easier on me so I know exactly where a train should be going if they just tell me the train number. Uh, aggregate job, again, that's an extra train. It's one of my unit trains, and that's going to start in around the Gotham area, travel westbound, and go the entire length. And then I have various local ones. Now, if you'll notice that I have a G, an S, H, and a 100, we can start a train op session, and I can immediately put four crews under four different parts of the layout spread them out so we're, they're not all congested in one area around the dispatch office. And then again, the trades run in sequence. 
Now we'll, I'm gonna go through this, some pictures of the railroad just to give you an idea of what it looks like. This is <clears throat> the top section, again, is uh, Logan. You can see that was train 201 sitting there. There's a train card with that engine. Uh, you can see the signals bridge here, dwarfs here for the um, trains to get permission to leave. And again, we, we operate under signal indication. Uh, this is the lower half, it's approximately six inches. And this is one of the few places on the railroad where there's, um, might be a little work up in here, but there's also work down here. <clears throat> this gives you, a, just going around, we're actually going eastbound. This gives you another view of uh, the industrial areas. Um, and then this is actually uh, how it's all been scenic and ballast again, uh, the signals here. This gives you an idea as for the identification for the crews of where they're at. This is one of the panels that controls this, <clears throat> both levels here of the uh, control points. The white section per pertains to the top section and the black section of this panel shows the bottom level. Hey, Dan, yeah. <clears throat> this is Eric. Quick question for you. Um, are you going to cover the, um, the car card system you're using? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then also for the crews, there's a compass east and west. Also over here, there's a, a equipment stand that shows the uh, name of the uh, control point. And here's the card section. So, so I'm going to go on through these pictures real quick. Just to give you an idea. This is one of the electronic panels, one of three uh, that I have on the railroad that uh, runs the uh, track detection and signaling system. And again, these are all different uh, points. This is the Vanna yard, one of the minor yards in the railroad. Now we're getting into the Sexton yard. Here's an area down here, if you'll notice this panel, it's got CTC, normal and reverse, passing lane and a, and a pass in the main line. Uh, main line is the trackage always closest to the aisle. This is a toggle switch, will, which normally be thrown to the top, which is CTC. This is where if a crew needs to do a run around or local control of a turnout after asking permission of the uh, dispatcher, they can flip it to normal. Uh, that does several things on the uh, a dispatcher's uh, CTC panel and locks everybody out of those adjacent tracks. This is Gotham Yard, a main line, arrival departure tracks, what I call the drill track, and these are destination tracks. This is the dock, which is primarily used by the unit trains. Again, we got grain. Uh, we do aggregate, not iron ore aggregate, coal and petroleum chemical products here. Again, this is a the incline going from one level to another and then crossing itself. Here's a picture of an interchange in here that train will come around here and pick up cars. This is for the unit trains. And then this is another <clears throat> switching district and we're right back at uh, Logan Yard. So that's the railroad. So, oh, this has got a couple more pictures. Here is the uh, Canal job or the canal area, which is, was put in. Um, I've had used to use these two bridges on the original part of the railroad. Uh, so I created this canal. And this is some new industrial areas I'm just adding into here. Another minor yard. And then uh, last industrial switching district was is which is this one. 
Okay, now we're going to get into the car orders, car reporting system without using reporting marks. First of all, it makes some assumptions that the crew on the ground is not interested where a car came from or where it's going. It just they just interested in what they have to do with it. They this is what the car forwarding system is. It's just basically industrial switching. And the car card system, there is a card for uh, each car. And the car order system, there's a card for each spot. Um, the car order system, there's no documentation for any of the rolling stock, which you can add and subtract cars to the uh, to the operating scheme and it won't matter. We're gonna do some, we're look at the car order form, how it works, yard transfers, way freights or turns, or unit trains or milk, milk runs and then advantages. First, do a real quick survey. I think you might've seen some of this, but some people have used the uh, switch list, four-sided uh, cards and pockets. Uh, the real simple system of just exchange one card to another, like eight cards here or something else. Um, if you operate in HO or smaller, you wear glasses, have very heavy weathered cars, less than bright lighting. I, I used to, in Grand Rapids, used to operate at night. Uh, I hate paperwork of any type. Uh, and I want to start ops, but I'm not, I don't want a complicated start in an easy setup session. This is the form that I use here. It's just a Excel spreadsheet with the various different car types on the railroad. And then across the top is the various different switching districts and of, of each type. So that way, if I want to go to a hobby shop or a train show and I need a particular type of car, you can see over here, I'm probably in need of some uh, 50 foot high cube uh, box cars. Um, Cause I got a minus three. I got some extra 50 footers. Uh, if I want, I could probably change the car order cards to even that out. The form itself is very basic. You have a, <coughs> The town where the home yard for that local is, it'll say car order on it, type of box, uh, but type of car that's gonna be set out. The destination, the town name and the industrial area, the siding and the spot number. And then it tells you what to do with the card once we've done some switching. The other side <coughs> is the pickup order. Again, it's a lot of the information in, is the same on the front side, except that when you get it back to, a, a, to a, its yard, it'll say what track to put it on. In this case, it's eastbound. Uh, my road has gone, gotten to be a point where it's so busy, it's just been put on an outbound track. Start looking at yard transfers. This is a train order that's been given to a crew. There's duplicate trainers. There's two copies of each one. Um, one will stay with the dispatcher and he'll place that up near his, for his reference purposes. And then this is a train number here, 206. Again, the various, where it's going, direction, proceed per signal indication tells you where the, uh, some control points are at Apple, that's the, uh, sex and yard lead. Gives you, tells you what to do, with the various uh, interchanges, uh, lake, uh, Lee, Sexton, when you get to Sexton Yard, you flip the back over and it tells you what you need to do there in that yard. And it also gives you the number of cars, you're, you're uh, not to exceed 18 cars because you're gonna be picking up four more cars in Dundee before you get to Do uh, Gotham. So you started with 10 cars, you pick up along the way, and when you get up to Gotham, you should have 22 cars. To give you an idea, this is Sexton Yard. Our train is pulled in to the yard. The train crew goes over to Sexton Yard board, all right? And it looks at its train number. Again, the yard transfer crews only carry this train 206 and this train ID card. That's the only paperwork that yard transfers have. But they come down to to train 206, the name of their train, westbound, 
given the priority of what car orders they're going to fill. Well, in this case, it would be Liberty and then Logan Industrial after that. So they go to the unfilled car orders uh, box, pick up the cards out of Liberty, and now they're going to start matching them across the top. But before I do that, I want to point out to the yards or basically every yard has a main line that doesn't affect any yard activity. They got a yard main, which will rival departures, two tracks to put the, uh, the local uh, cars that's going to go out on the locals. And then the outbound tracks are either, in this case, westbound or eastbound. Here you can see where we've matched up. It says a 40 foot high cube, 50 foot, and another 50 foot. So I, you, a train crew would match those up. However, there's other options in his trains. You can, he can flip them around and do different other 50 footers. It doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, the importance is that you see the siding uh, one, spot two, you know, uh, siding one, uh, uh, spot one for this 50 footer has to have a 50 footer in that spot. Um, so here's one option. Once there is done, he'll put those cards on the uh, local track on their, on their literary box. Again, this is a filled box. Now it goes on, on east uh, end uh, track three. He's also got trains for local industrial. Uh, which I guess I got them out of order or something like that. Well, now the train's ready to depart and it's going to get over to Gotham Yard. One thing I will mention because I'm missing a slide is he'll also pick up cars that are outbound track. So maintaining the total amount of cars that are 18. So our train's ready to go. Uh, yard, uh, the uh, Road crew is contacted dispatch or the uh, section yard master is contacted dispatch. Say so trains two or six ready to go. Westbound is to the left. You can see where a signal has been indicated and they're ready to proceed. Gotham Yard is the main yard of the railroad. Again, here's another view of it. The main track here that bypasses all the yard tracks four arrival departure tracks, that drill track, and then destination tracks. The back over here is this upper section are the uh, unfilled car orders for these destination tracks that are over here. Down on the bottom are the filled orders for these trains. Again, these are the destination tracks that they'll go. So, uh, various uh, North Gotham, uh, RX facility, Gotham Industrial, et cetera. Again, this uh, use the yard tracks on uh, arrival departure, just push the button, computer reads it as an input and exchange, uh, changes the various switch machines on the railroad for that track. Again, the arrival departure tracks on the trains in one picture, train 108 is ready to go, the main section and then the second section where the uh, yard master is building train 103. There'll be a later outbound train. And you can see G09, which is a Plymouth Dundee turn. That's a train that's ready to depart uh, <clears throat> Gotham. And here's a little bit closer look here. Uh, all the car order cards are uh, color coded. And so that's just in case they get mixed up you can uh, take care of that. Um, this is the yard mass, uh, Gotham Yard Master. Again, another place of where the storage tracks for each of the various locals are on the left-hand side. Tells them what to do about the, the grain hoppers and coal hoppers for the unit trains. Gives them, tells them where the yard limits are. Some instructions of how to do it. The order of trains that are coming into his yard, you know, um, and the arrival departure tracks departs eastbound, arise eastbound, et cetera. And then these are the number of cards that will go on each of the trains and then some other little notes. So that gives you an idea uh, about uh, yard transfers real quickly. 
Uh, now we're going to start talking about the meat of the operation, which I really like. It's called the, the local turns. A similar card, two copies, one for dispatch, one for the yard crew. Again, and this is a local freight S1 out of Ithaca and Calvin. It's very similar information on this card that you would find on the yard transfer. Uh, when you get down to uh, Sexton, you're going to, uh, well, here on the right side of the back of the card, you'll see where there's how to make up your train. And then you're going to get your switching district instructions, which in this case will be Ithaca and Calvin. You basically are going to pick up the cars, for, uh, pick up orders. You're going to set out the cars per the car orders. You're going to flip your cards over and move to pickup box. And I'll explain this again in more detail. And then when you get back to the yard, you're going to put the cars that you picked up on the east or westbound cars, flip them over and put them back in the unfilled box. <clears throat> so here's our filled box in Sexton. Here's our Ithaca Calvin turn. Here, and there, uh, this is the cards here behind this one. When it, I usually use the system that once I have enough cars for a train, I'll put this piece, uh, piece of card stock in front. So there's, we don't fill too many cars for that one train. We'll go further on down and use the priority list and fill some cars for the other trains. Here we are, we've taken the cars out of this box here. Again, this gives you an idea of the unfilled box and then the filled box. Uh, and here we are just double checking. We just matched them all up. And you'll notice that this is a high cube and that's a high cube. It does, I could have taken this card, could have taken this card and put over here and taken this one and put over there and it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Here's the town of Ithaca. Here's the, the town name. Again, it's a very con similar system, set outs, hold and pickups. And there was two cars to pick up in uh, Ithaca. But I take them out, I put them by the industrial spots here. So that would be the pickups. Now the uh, set outs, again, we have uh, <clears throat> siding one spot two for 40 footer, 50 footer, and one three for a spot for Admiral. However, I could flip the end cards around and drop those off and it doesn't make any difference to the operational scheme. And here, hey, hey Dan, yeah. just to uh, clarify, uh, one of the questions was how do you verify ahead of time that there are four cars to be picked up? It's like there is no verification. There might they might be there and they might not, right? Right. Right. Well, I'll I'll, I'll get into that. Okay. I do no setup on this for an op session for the most part. So the system will we'll get into correcting the problems that might be there, but there's no verification. If you got to a place and you had a car order card that needed to be picked up and there was no car there, you would just take the car order card back to the yard, all right? If you should happen to get to an industry that has a car there, but no car order card, then you take that car back to the yard. It just, it doesn't matter that much. Um, and you'll notice also on like here, and on some of the other buildings, you'll notice little numbers. These numbers correspond to the front panels uh, to, uh, of the, on the same numbers on car orders. And here's another one. And I was hoping to get, let me see if I can find a panel for you. It's kind of hard to see. I probably should have taken a close up. But on the, the panels down in this area, there's a number one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. And it's same down at the bottom, they're harder to see. That's the numbers that corresponds to the cards. So these numbers here corresponded. So you got two places. You got the, the fascia 
uh, diagram panel, the track work with the car number on it, and you also will have that number on the uh, structure, or sometimes I put it on the ties of the track if you can't do it. Uh, kind of gives you an idea there. <clears throat> so now we've picked up our cars, we've set out our four cars, now we need to flip them over. And what we'll do is we'll take this stack here that are in hold. We're going to flip them over and put them in, into the um, pickup spot because they come out of their sleeve. The ones that were in set, so these get flipped, put here. These get just placed in here. So the next time a train runs into Ithaca, these are the cars that are going to be picked up. And then the, the cycle just repeats itself. And now we're ready to depart. When we get all done with our local, we should have approximately eight of these cards that say pickup order on them. We need to then, per the instructions here, flip these cards over to the pickup side. And in this case, uh, here at first it's got a westbound and eastbound just tells you which of the two tracks on it gotham yard only has an outbound track which is one of the modifications i had to do to the system but here where we're flipping them over and we're putting we're flipping these over they're in a little plastic sleeve take them out and then slide them back in and say it's car order side and then you're done. These will go in the unfilled card order spots. So the next time a train comes and it's Ithaca is on its priority, you can go through them. They'll pick this stack out and keep going. Now, I don't know if you remember, but just to give you an idea, as far as the, you know, car orders or a number of cars that I have, I like to have like a hundred and some 50 footers. So uh, maybe 75 forties and, you know, 75 uh, 40 high cubes. There is a potential for this system that that this particular car spot could see over a long period of time every single car that's a 40 foot box car on the railroad where the four position it's always going to be that same car going back every four times so that kind of gives you the randomness involved with the railroad those people who like to use switch lists i also work on that for them when they get ready to go, they can take their stack of car orders. They can write out their, their uh, switch list here and where they need to go. They can walk over to the industrial area, pick up the pickup cards, and complete this form. Some of the advantages of using the system, it's self-correcting. That's what your question was, Eric, here just a minute ago. And if a car is in the wrong place, they either can leave it or pick it up at their discretion, and it won't affect operations. If they find no pickup order, they take the car back. And if they find a pickup order with no car, they take the car order back. They'll take the car order back to the yard, flip it over to an unfilled, and you're done. If you want to add a car to your fleet, you just put on the layout. That's all there is to it. Um, if you want to take one off, you take it off. Again, we're not looking at any car order reporting marks. We're only looking at the type of car. This is a great deal well, when you have clubs where various people are bringing in uh, various rolling stocks and taking them home or modular layouts, uh, something that they can do there and they can uh, take the equipment and go back and forth. But the car order cards would stay with, uh, in case of a portable layout, would stay with that section of the, car, of the layout or stay at the club. Do you want to add an industry or spur? I started off with about five or six industries back in 1995, 97, uh, one yard, et cetera. I am still using the same car orders cards that I had back then. The layout has just grown obviously immensely over the course of time. Um, so you want to add industry, you just put it on the layout, the figure of the car spots and the car types, make your new cards. Uh, you want to remove or change an industry, just tear up the old cards. Just And uh, one thing which I didn't point out, if I have an industry that will take uh, three different uh, box cars, 
I will usually change and make one spot 40 foot high cube, one foot 40, one foot 50 cube, uh, 50 foot cube or high cube box. That way it keeps the train crews uh, kind of honest and they, they can't just put in three sets of cars and be done with their one set, just shove the, take the first one out of the front and then shove a new one in in the front. It makes it a lot more switching. On an average, give you an idea, a local will take 45 minutes to an hour to operate. Again, it's continuous operation. Uh, we just can stop the trains wherever they're at uh, when it gets guided done. And then I just, we just pick up when we keep on going. And it's, again, I've had over 250 op sessions uh, using this system. Uh, again, through freights don't need any paperwork, so you don't have to worry about a through freight uh, dropping a uh, stack of cards or anything else. If you're on a local, you drop a cards, they're all color coded to say where the home yards are, and uh, they have indications, you know, should they be car orders on one side, then they would be either being set out, um, or if they have pickup order on them, they're usually going to be picked up. And the best reason you don't need any card numbers. Um, if any of this looks familiar, I'm probably one of the few individuals who've actually had my layout in three different national conventions. Um, RR 1.0 was in Great Lakes Express in 2007. It was in uh, Detroit, and I lived in Grand Rapids. Peachtree Express was 2.0 in 2013. That was the one in Atlanta, and I lived in Griffin, Georgia. And obviously, the current location here was Highball to Indy. Uh, 2016. For more information, <clears throat> uh, I'm moderator of a, uh, was a Yahoo groups and I changed it over to groups IO. Uh, here's the site on that. There's a lot of people that have been giving a lot of clinics on this uh, throughout the either regions or divisions and they are also out there. Uh, you can apply for memberships. Hank Tenwald uh, on 20 March, March uh, 2012. And MRA Magazine wrote a, a real nice article on that. Uh, again, national conventions, I've given some of them, and here's another one in 2012. Uh, I have my website, which has a lot of the same information on it, more in a written form. And then in the OBSEG Magazine Dispatcher's Office, Earl Hackett had wrote an uh, article back in January uh, 2015 of how he's taken the system and modified it for uh, an excellent uh, operations for handling coal. And that's it. Uh, Dan, we got a, got a couple questions for you. Um, uh, are all of the cars spotted? I, I think the answer to this is yes. Are all the cars spotted at the industries considered ready to go for the next turn that comes by? I believe the answer to that's yes, right? Only if they're there in the pickup order. Okay. Okay, some of, some of them I will only do the ones that pick up. What I usually do with mine is let's just say a switching district and I've got them about size anywhere about like 24 car spots. Eight of those car spots are gonna be empty for the new train to come in. Eight are gonna be hold and eight will be picked up. So I usually use on an average about a third. So when the train comes to a local area, they're gonna pick up eight drop off eight, and the hold ones will be flipped, the cards are gonna be flipped over and put into the pickup box for the next time it train, runs. I have some switching districts that actually have two hold spots. Um, this means, I mean, I have a switching district of 40 or 50 cars, and you can run, two people can run uh, same local in one op session, which is very unlikely, because I have 36 uh, trains they can go through there and you're not going to switch the same cars back and forth. Yep. Um, just looking through some of the comments here. Um, some of them I answered already cause I've been there once or twice. Um, uh, Chuck, I always screw up his name. Chuck H's question. Do any trains bound for Gotham yard ever get overtaken by another train bound for the same location? upsetting the schedule that the yard master sheet shows to be the expected arrival sequence. If so, what happens? The, um, go ahead. Now the yard master has complete authority. It's again, it's by signal indication. If he wants to hold a train at a particular spot, 
to reroute trains through, that's his prerogative. So you can't really goof up. It's, they're running a sequence, but when you get eight trains potentially starting at the beginning of a session, uh, they're not really, everybody's kind of doing their own little thing, and that's the uh, joy of having being dispatcher on the railroad, which <laughs> you've been. Yeah, and yeah. You can control. You control what everybody does. That's yeah, the dispatcher's the, power. Yeah, if anybody and if Dan will be kind enough to to share the slides, I'll put them up on the website for download. Um, but he has some. If you're looking for industrial districts, I mean, he has some amazing ones. What is that? Is it Erie? That's that great big one. That's the big factory with the double-ended tracks on it. Yes. Where you had the little Erie switching. Different. Yeah. Yeah. You can basically end up working that for, I mean, there have been people who are, well, let's say newer operators who have ended up stuck in Erie for hours trying to get all the cars parked into the right places. I mean, it's, um, it, even an experienced operator will take, take a while to do it. So there, like I said, if you're looking for inspiration for switching districts, Dan's got just, I mean, some gorgeous layouts. Um, in how he did them. It makes it for yeah, real yeah, fun I, to switch yeah. um, so. I'll put it back, this one back up if you're still steered. He's talking about this area in here. Yeah. And again, there's actually six tracks here, but Erie's got its own track, its own level. You're off the main line and passing site and you get in over here and uh, you've got trailing and facing points. So you have to constantly be running back and forth and picking up cars. And you'll find out on some of my newer areas, I might have four or five car spots on one uh, track. And that means that you're gonna have to shuffle those cars back and forth and get them back in the right order. Uh, that's, it's, it's, to me, it's just the fun of it, trying to plan ahead. And you can, once you do an area, uh, this is another area over here that's caused a lot of gray hair to come about. It doesn't look that hard. But believe me, it's trailing in points, and it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not as simple. Some of the older parts uh, are just like trailing points, but the every town has a runaround in it, runaround trackage, so it's it's not impossible. Got it. Hackerinen, okay, got it, Chuck. <laughs> Thanks for the the phonetics. Um, how deep is the bench work and crew reach at Erie? Isn't it like uh, that that point pick? put it out there isn't that about four maybe five feet out right right but you're only reaching in from this side yep. to here and in the front in here the same thing going this way so you're not yep. reaching back here at all yeah it's not bad and then all of the all of the turnouts through there are all powered yes um so that makes it a little bit easier that's from john green in vancouver bc i was asking that um uh, Frank Labor was asking about uh, how detailed the cards were, whether you're handling dealing with loaded versus unloaded. And I tell them that, no, you're just moving a car point A to point B and not really tracking loads versus unloads, right? That's correct. Yeah, we're only worried about a train crew. They're just, yeah. for the yeah. most part, told to pick up a car or drop off a car. They could care a lot what's what's not in it. Yep. There has been some systems of the car orders where people have said this is what's inside the lading or if it's empty or whatever uh i i don't get into that level because i'm the only one who's done 99.999 percent of the work on the railroad over the course of time so i that's just not a level of sophistication yep. that i felt warranted of my time yep like i said as somebody who's operated and dispatched there it's it's a if you're used to having to hunt down car numbers this is actually you it's not as complicated, but he's more than made up for it with, uh, I won't call them switching puzzles, but just the, the complexity of the, the districts and the, the fun of doing that. So if you don't like switching, this is not the layout for you. <laughs> so um, just looking to see if there are any other further, uh, if anybody has further questions, if you wanna put them in the chat window, but uh, Dan, if if you can send me your slides, if you're okay with that, I'll. Yep. Oh, um, all the turnouts are powered. Uh, yes, I believe so. Except for the areas in Rowan and Hudson. Okay. So there's uh, the new the new area. The new sections, right. Yep. Um, Frank is asking about uh, 
yard leads for the yards. Um, I know Gotham doesn't have a yard lead to work from, um, at least not for like the first few tracks. Um, you can come all the way around here. Here's uh, like um, Bart here. So you yeah. do have a little bit of trackage. Yeah. Not much, but again, we're not looking at huge amounts of train back and right. forth. But again, yep. for all intents and purposes, Havana, Belden, and Oneida was the first part of the layout I built in Grand Rapids. And then when I went to, uh, so it was my action move. This is parts of this is 25 years old and it's my first layout. So I've made a lot of mistakes and unfortunately i never learned from my mistakes and uh, kind of went that way with it. Uh, there's not really long yard leads. Now this is Sexton okay. is never a long yard lead, but the other side, no. Yep. I, um, Seth Newman, uh, did you reuse the layout parts when you moved? And I believe you said you used reused all, almost all of it, right? Yeah, I think Seth's been to my place. I can't remember if he was in Grand Rapids, but I think he was in, in Atlanta. Yep. Um, this whole layout was moved in on March 6th or 7th of 2016. And by the convention, I had it all up and running with the signaling system back in. And uh, basically, uh, it's this whole section in here and all the way down here was just a bolt back together. Got it. And... Uh... Uh, you've got, uh, you've got a hump like ramps most places, don't you? I'm trying yeah. to remember. Yeah. Yeah. So KD uncoupling ramps to, uh, Scott, who's asking the question. That, or they can use picks. They can use their yep. hands. Some of them was mentioned about, yeah, it's an operating layout. Things are going to get broken. Uh, more than likely I'm the first one to break anything. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, I did manage to pick up some real nice, uh, tank cars. But uh, we're all here to have fun. Things yep. are going to happen. That's yep. that's just life. And you are doing. I mean, we, we run cabooses on the trains, all the trains. Yes. Yep. Yes. So. All right. I think we got. I think we got everybody's question. So, um, unless there's anything else, we'll say thanks to Dan for presenting. And uh, once he sends me the slides, I'll put them up on the. Uh, opsig.org slash virtual page. Um, obviously, um, uh, we had, uh, um, and Frank, we've got, I'll put, uh, I'll put Dan's slides up. It has the external references as well that he provided. So Frank Labor, that will, uh, should answer that. Um, we did have a little Little shuffle in the schedule this evening. Um, Carl Bloom was unable to present, but Dan's this this card system is is pretty fascinating. It's definitely unique. Um, you know, it's a different way to do things. So I wanted to make sure we had plenty of time to talk about that. So there's there's approximately when on the groups uh, 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 Yahoo groups we had like 200 and some odd members on that group. So yeah. it's out there. There's quite a bit of people out there using it. Yeah, I know that uh, I met I met Hank up there in Grand Rapids, and they they had uh, used it there on that uh, what is it the uh, historical society layout there? Yes, in the old in the park. Yep. Um, but uh, so, all right. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here. <clears throat>